All right, we are now in section 1.2. Here's the I can statement. I can understand and identify. Here's the word on this, algebraic properties. So here's how we're going to spell this, algebraic properties. Algebraic, so it's like algebra with an IC on the end there. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. And then the warm-up, just a quick reminder, we've probably talked about this before, it's what is algebra? Well, algebra is math using blank and symbols. So it's going to be using letters and symbols. And we talked last time about why we use letters. They're just kind of convenient choices for uh, the symbols that are going to represent numbers and that sort of thing. So I just want to make sure we're clear on this. Um, we use the word algebra quite a bit. Let's make sure we know what that is. Algebra is just a noun. It is a thing. Okay, it's math using letters and symbols. The word algebraic is an adjective, so it describes the type of things that we're going to be doing, okay? So it, it, it uh, describes a noun, so it describes the, the operations and the type of things that we're going to be doing. So what I've got here looks a little bit daunting. It's a big, long chart. We've got a bunch of stuff on this side with bold and then some things with blanks in it. And then a couple weird looking expressions in each one of these boxes here with some blanks in there and we're gonna be filling those in. So the point here and what we're gonna be doing for the next couple of days is we know how to solve equations pretty well at this point. But one thing that's, that's a really good skill to have is to be able to justify and tell people, hey, this is what I did, this is why I did it, this is how it works. So we wanna be able to explain to people, well, this is, this is why I can do each one of these steps. Now, you're gonna be familiar with most of the stuff in this table right here. A lot of these properties you're already gonna know, but you may not know the technical name for it. Some of it's gonna be, oh, is that what you call it? Why do you need such a long name to describe what that is? So here's what we're after. And you probably saw these starting in seventh grade, maybe a little bit before that. We just don't use these words all the time. And that's what we're gonna do is in this unit, we're gonna kinda bring these back to the forefront. Remember, oh, that's why I can do that. And that, actually, that property actually has a name that I'm using to solve that equation. So here we go. In this column, we've got the algebraic property. In this column over here, we've got an example. And then underneath each one of these um, technical names for each one of these, it's just kind of an easy phrase to remember, oh, that's what it does. That's gonna be hopefully the easy, understandable part here. So the first word or the first property is an, the additive identity. So when we do an additive identity, what that means is when we say identity, you've got an identity, um, I've got an identity, numbers and variables have an identity also. That's who they are or what they are. So when we, when we say the additive identity, what we mean is it maintains its identity even though we added something. So take a look at this example over here. We're gonna take A and we're gonna add something and we're still gonna get A. Well, the only number that you can add that doesn't change anything is zero. So if you take A plus zero, you get A, that's the additive identity. So the additive identity is a fancy way of talking about zero. So if you add zero, you get the same thing. So we've got a multiplicative identity. What number would you multiply to get the same thing? Well, if you multiply by a one, you get the same thing. And we've got our example over here. B times one would just be plain old B. We normally don't leave just one times B or B times one. We simplify that and we write that as a B. So additive identity, multiplicative identity, and then we've got additive inverse and multiplicative inverse. So these undo each other. Uh, the, the additive inverse is gonna undo whatever was there to begin with. So it says, if you add the blank, then you get zero. So let's take a look at this right here. We started off with a nine and we wanna end up with zero. And that's what I, what, I, what I was talking about when they undo each other. Whatever number is right here, it has to cancel that out to make a zero. So what are we gonna put there? We're gonna put the opposite of that. Let me make that look a little bit better. We're gonna put a negative nine right there. So if you add the opposite, of whatever that number or expression is, you're gonna get zero. So if we started out with negative eight, we're gonna to have to add eight. Those are opposites of each other. And then the same type of thing is true with multiplicative inverses. They undo each other, but it's a little bit more complicated. So I'm gonna fill this in and I'm hoping this word rings a bell. If you multiply by the not opposite, but the reciprocal, reciprocal then you end up with one. So if I look at this example right here, this is 12 times 1 12th. Remember, this is really 12 over one. The reciprocal would be one over 12. And notice that when I multiply, I can cross cancel the 12s. So we end up with one. 
Now, if we started off with a fraction like 4 thirds, the reciprocal of that would be 3 fourths. Those would cross cancel and we end up with 1. So the additive inverse, they're opposites of each other. And multiplicative inverses, they are reciprocals of each other so that things can cancel off. And this is a good time to remind yourself, when you say cancel, you really ought to cancel, say cancel and be more specific. Say they cancel to be 0 or they cancel to be 1. If we're talking about things that, that are additive inverses, they cancel to be 0. If we're talking about things that are multiplicative inverses, then they, mul they cancel off to be a 1. All right, now the commutative property of addition and multiplication, you'll notice that I've, I've kind of lumped those two together. When you commute, you move from one place to the other. So the commutative property says this, you can move things around, so let's write the word move here, and get the same answer. So one plus two is the same as two plus one, the order doesn't make any difference. Um, and a plus b is the same, sorry, a times b is the same as b times a. Doesn't make any difference there. So commutative means you can move things around. The associative property of addition and multiplication, when you associate, you group together like you associate with your friends and stuff like that. What that means is you can group things differently and get the same answer. So here's an example. I've got 3 plus 4 plus 5, 3 plus 4 in parentheses, so we do that first. Um, that would be the same as if I had 3 plus... 4 plus 5. It wouldn't matter if I add the 3 and 4 together first and those are grouped together or the 4 and 5 uh, together first and, and we add those together first. You're going to get the same answer either way. And then the same thing is true with multiplication. If I've got x times y times, take a guess at what it would be here, x times y times z. If I do the x times y first and then multiply it by z, it doesn't make any difference. I'm going to get the same answer as if I did the y times z and then multiplied it by x. And then the distributive property you're probably familiar with. What we can do here is we can multiply through to get rid of the parentheses. Let's write parentheses here. So we're going to distribute through here. And I like drawing those little lines so we don't forget anything there. So this is going to be 7x minus 63. And again, notice what happens here. We've distributed the multiplication over the subtraction. Works with addition also. Um, and so what we've got here is we've got a new expression without any parentheses in it, um, which generally speaking would be a little more uh, simplified in most cases. That's going to be a little bit better to have it in this format, the 7x minus uh, 63, than it is to have the 7 times the quantity x minus 9. Okay, multiplicative, multiplicative property of 0. This is the one everybody loves. You learned this in elementary school. Um, if you multiply by 0, you get 0. doesn't matter how big or small the number is. So a times 0 is 0. Zero. And so now we'll take a look at the next one. It's the substitution property. And when we say substitute, a lot of times we'll use the phrase, we'll plug things in. And that's what we're going to use here. So you can plug something in. Ooh, I've got a typo. I've got to fix that. Yeah, we'll fix that right now. So you can plug something in for something else. It is equal to. So in this example right here, I've got a minus b equals 11 and b equals 4. So what that means is, in this expression right here, since b is the same as 4, those are interchangeable. What I can do is I can say, hey, look, I'm just going to replace that b with a 4. So a minus 4 is equal to 11. And then we're all set to go. So that's the substitution property. Um, and then the symmetric property of equality. Um, this is actually one that we've uh, demonstrated before already. Now it's got a name. What this means is you can switch the sides of an equation and it's still the same thing. So if you see x equals 10 and somebody else writes 10 equals x, same thing. It's kind of like doing a big pancake flip and flipping the sides there. So that's called the symmetric property. Um, addition and subtraction property of equality, and then multiplication and division property of equality. Um, I've got some examples here. Let's take a look at these. So I've got 5 minus 4 equals 11, which is true. Um, if I were to add 4 to this side and add 4 to this side, take a look at what happens. Those are additive inverses, so they undo each other. They cancel to be a 0. And on this side, I'd have a 15. And on this side, we have 11 plus 4. Well, that's equal to 15. Well, that was a true equation, and this is a true equation. So here's what this means. You can add or subtract the same thing to or from, if you're subtracting. Uh, both sides and get a new true equation. So these right here, these two lines right here are sometimes called the golden rule of algebra. As long as you're doing the same thing to both sides, you're not going to mess anything up. So on this one, we can subtract 5 from both sides. Those are going to cancel to be a 0. I'm going to write y equals 3. And that right there would be a true equation. 
Um, and then, oops, that should be a negative 13. Gosh, I had to pay attention there. So negative 13. Um, and if you were to plug that back in using the substitution property like up here, negative 13 plus 5 would equal negative 8. True equation up here, so true equation right there and, and vice versa. So let's take a look at this right here, multiplication and division property of equality. Notice that we're solving this equation. You kind of just look at this and know exactly what we need to do. We need to multiply both sides by 5. Those are multiplicative inverses, so they cancel to be a, a 1. So I have 1y, which is just y. So I end up with negative 40. I've done the same thing to both sides. Perfectly legal. I'm going to do the same thing. Whoops. Do the same thing on both sides right here. I'm thinking ahead of what the answer is going to be. Those uh, cancel to be a 1, so I get x equals negative 5 on this one. Again, we end up with another true equation. So as long as we're doing the same thing to both sides, adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing, Totally okay, that's a legal algebraic move, and we get another true equation. Now, I've got an asterisk right here. You just can't use zero. Now, there are a couple reasons for this. If we try to divide, divide by zero, we know there's a problem with dividing by zero. We know that that's not defined. But there's also a problem with multiplying equations by zero. Let's say that on this one, so I'm going to change colors here. Let's say that on this one, I said, hey, you know what? I'm just going to multiply both sides by zero. Well, what we'd end up with here is 0 times 4x. This is using that 0 property. We get 0, and we get 0 equals 0. You could, this is basically called a trivial solution. What we've done here is we've basically made the entire equation disappear. The interesting thing about this is, even if the original equation didn't have an answer, um, 0 does equal 0, and it lo would look like it does have an answer when it actually doesn't. So. Um, when you're using this multiplication and division property of equality, we don't want to multiply by zero and we don't want to divide by zero. So just keep that in mind. Hopefully nobody would do that anyway, but um, that's just kind of the deal there. So let's take a look at uh, the last property and then we're going to do some problems here. It says the equality property of exponentials. So if we've got an expon exponential exp expression, which can be kind of complicated, we've got this really cool property. Um, and it says, as long as the bases are equal, then the exponents must also be equal. So if I have something like this, if I have uh, 6 to the x equals 6 to the second, then x is equal to 2. So here's the deal. If the bases are the same, then the exponents have got to be the same. I mean, it's literally that simple. Um, so if I were to write something like this, 4 to the 9 equals 4 to the y. I can immediately just say, hey, you know what? If the bases are the same, that means y has got to equal 9. So now that we've got all those properties taken care of, let's go ahead and do a couple of problems. We're going to do this one example, and then we're going to take a look at, at a couple from the assignment, actually quite a few from the assignment. So what, what properties used uh, uh, in the following statement? So we've got 6 to the x equals 36 and 36 equals 6 to the second, and then 6 to the x equals 6 to the second. So I'm going to give you just a second to think about that. And one thing that this is doing is it's kind of teaching your brain to think about, OK, what tools do I have in there? What's going on here? What changed from here to here? And, and how, what property could I use to describe this? Well, if you take a look at this, here's what's happened. Um, on this side, I have a 6 to the x. And on that side, I have a 6 to the x. On the other side, I have a 6 squared. Well, I don't have a 6 squared here, but I do have a 6 squared here. So you'll notice this is kind of like the bridge. Now, there's actually a couple different ways that you could describe this with a few properties, but we're going to stick with the one that we know, and that's this one right here. This is the substitution property at work. The fact that we know 36 is the same as 6 squared, and then I can substitute for that, this is the substitution property. So I'm just going to write substitution property, and I'm going to circle that SUB, and I'll put a period there. You'll find that a lot of times I'll, I'll abbreviate a little bit. I'll shorten things up. I'll put a period there, and that way you'll know that we're substituting. By the way, if I were to subtract something, I'd want to put something like that. That way nobody would comp uh, confuse subtracting with substituting, okay? All right. So we're in good shape there. So that's the, that's the uh, property that was used on that one. Now we're going to turn our attention to a couple of problems right here and then come back and do the, the self-assessment. Please don't forget to do those. Those are a really important part of this. I realize there's a lot of material here. Hopefully you recognize some of the properties, maybe just not the names. But let's go ahead and take a look at these. So I think I've got these already highlighted. Um, so if you don't have your assignment, get that ready to go. Um, here's number one. It says multiplicative inverse. Now in this table, what we've got here is it will say the property. Um, sometimes it's there and sometimes it's missing. 
Um, there's an algebraic expression to represent that, and then there's a simplified expression. So we're gonna make sure that we've got all three of these taken care of, and on the first one, it says, okay, we're using the multiplicative inverse. Well, okay, maybe we know what that means, and maybe we don't. Hopefully you do. Remember, inverse means they undo each other. And this is the example that we've got. 3 fourths times 4 thirds. Well, if you cancel those off, those are gonna undo each other, and they're gonna cancel to be a one. Remember, multiplicative inverse, they undo each other, and they cancel out to be a one. Additive inverse would cancel to be a, a zero. So on this one right here, it says we've got additive. Remember additive, you'll remember that's gonna have something to do with multiplication. So we've got negative 12 plus zero equals negative 12. Well, that's the additive property of zero. So if you add zero, well, it maintained its identity. So this is the additive identity. That's the additive identity. And several of these are arranged kind of nicely to kind of remind you. You'll notice that multiplicative inverse and additive inverse are together. Multiplicative identity and additive identity are together. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind. Just getting familiar and kind of solidifying these names in our head. Multiplicative property of zero. So take a look at this. 432.1 times something is equal to zero. Remember, this is the simplified expression. That's got to be a zero right there. Uh, next one, come down here to 13. We're using the multiplica multiplication property of equality. So let's see what we've got here. Multiplication property of equality. Well, what that means is equality, it's got an equal sign in, there's an equal sign, and we're gonna be multiplying. Well, just think about what you would normally do when you're going to um, solve this equation. You're gonna cancel the two of these off, and you're gonna end up with x equals negative 24. And the thing that allowed us to do that is the multiplication property of equality. It's literally as simple as that. We're just looking at some simple examples, trying to get these names down. All right, Emily won $48 and then lost $48, leaving her with $0. Which property does this represent? Okay, so she had 48, then she lost 48, and she ended up with zero. So if she won 48, we could represent that with a positive 48. She lost 48, we could represent that with a negative or a minus 48. And when you combine those together, you end up with a zero. They cancel each other out to be zero. This is the additive, additive inverse. Remember, when they cancel each other out, that's going to be an inverse. So that is an additive inverse there. All right, let's flip over to the next page. Look at a couple on here. Um, this one, this table's a little bit different. All it says is name the algebraic property demonstrated by each statement. So let's just look right here. Uh, 5 times 4 equals 4 times 5. Okay, they, um, I mean, we know this is true. Both sides are equal to 20. But what we did here is we switched the order. We moved them around. And remember, the word for moving around is commuting. So this is the commutative. Let me spell this right. Commutative. Commutative prop of multiplication. Commutative property of multiplication. All right, let's come down here. 27. Uh, x plus 6 equals 16 then x is equal to 10. Hmm, what changed from here to here? Well, what you'd have to do is you'd have to subtract 6 from both sides. So I'm going to say this is the subtraction property of equality. All right, so subtraction property equals sign. We'll call that equality. And then we'll come down here, see if we've got anything else. I think we've got one more to take a look at. Um, it says, uh, if 7 to the x is equal to 7 squared, then x is equal to 2. Well, remember, this is that, uh, what's that property called again? Gosh, we could look it up. We could come back over here. This is the equality property of exponentials. This is if the bases are equal, then the exponents have to be equal. So we're going to say equality property of expose of exponentials. Now, if you want to write them all out, that's totally okay. Uh, sometimes teachers like you to write equality property of exponentials, or they'll have some uh, fancy name for it or something like that. As long as you get the idea across and get these uh, memorized and figured out for the test, then you're in good shape. All right, good luck.